Hey there folks, I am the Mighty Plantain, and I got something that promises to be really special tonight. This is Pyroclast. Now this is a uh, collaboration brew between Orno Brewing Company, OBC, and Nice in Limerick, Maine. So a couple of, uh, couple of Maine breweries. Now it says here, it's a barrel-aged golden wild ale. A longitudinal collaboration between the two. But here's what I'm going to read to you. I'm going to read to you the whole label because this has gone through a lot and it's a very complex process and I think it deserves to be spoken about. Uh, born from an initial explosion of heat and energy, this then cooled and slowly transformed. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble because the, uh, the glare on the bottle and the small print are really messing with me. The pyroclast is a celebration of the evolutionary process of time, both long and short term. The process began with a blast of activity in January of 2016. Dustin Johnson, head brewer at Nice, and As Marsh, Sa Marsh Sachs, head brewer at OBC, assembled the ingredients for this wild collaboration you hold in your hand. And here's where it gets interesting. A simple base of wheat, Vienna, Pilsner, and oats was mashed together for an oak-aged wild ale. After a subtle bittering addition of Mount Hood along with Glacier and Apollo hops for flavor, this wort went to the fermenters to mingle with OBC's house ale yeast. The beginning of fermentation marked the addition of Pyroclast's most important ingredient, thyme. All right. Pyroclast was split into white wine and neutral oak barrels, each inoculated with different blends of uh, Breton, Breton Mices, and wild yeast. I might have mispronounced that first one. Pyroclast was then racked to Nice's house red wine barrels, which contain their own blend of wild yeasts. After over a year of Funkinetics in the barrel room, Pyroclast was returned to stainless for final lagering and packaging. Uh, Pyroclast presents with a unique melange of flavors and aromas. Oak sets the table as notes of pineapple, yogurt, light acid, pear, wine, and a subtle tartness poke through. So this has been through a lot. Several different types of barrels, several different types of yeasts, several grains, and several uh, <laughs> several types of hops. So it should be a fairly complex brew, as they said. It comes in at 10.4% alcohol by volume. They did cap it off with this really lovely sparkly wax seal designed to look like lava, I'm assuming. It doesn't do a half bad job of that. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to peel that off all at once, so I'm just going to fight it with the bottle opener. There we go. I've had a couple of brews from each of these breweries, and... Um, I'm going to say we've got high expectations, including especially looking at the process this went through. Uh, they've been at most of the local main beer festivals that I've done. Personally, I'm not a big fan of wild ales. I don't like the sourness and the tartness that wild yeasts impart. Um, Certain things like lambics and that it just they just kind of turn me off. But given what this beer has been through, I anticipate that it's still going to be good, and that I'm going to enjoy it nonetheless. Because uh, with all the barrel aging and everything else, it does sound like it's going to be great. Now there is a bit of an orangish, orangish tint to the beer itself. It's slightly effervescent, a little bit cloudy. I didn't put a really good head on that, but I don't know if that's my fault or if the beer itself is not really uh, foaming up good. Not really.
really getting a lot out of the aroma. Maybe some tart and fruity notes. And a hint of wine in the finish there, or in the, uh, the tail end of the aroma. I wouldn't necessarily call it the finish of the aroma, but... I'm letting it linger because it's actually evolving and I'm getting so many different things out of it. Up front, that tart fruitiness of the pineapple is hitting me. Well, the pineapple flavor, they didn't necessarily use pineapple in it, but... I'm guessing that a lot of the complexity from this brew is actually coming from the yeast blends, the various yeast blends that were used, because I'm not getting a lot of the woody notes or the um, or any hoppy notes or even really much of the grain. Um, it's got a nice medium medium mouthfeel. But a lot of complexity there, like I said, that I think is coming from the yeasts based on the brewing process and what I'm, I'm seeing mentioned on the label. Because I am getting that, those various degrees and, and different types of sour yeastiness. Um, like I said, up front, a bit of, the, bit of pineapple. And as the men label mentioned, I am, I am getting hints of uh, yogurty sourness um it's it's hard to describe this brew i'm getting hints of wininess not a not a particular red or, or white wine or any anything like that just that that typical wine flavor it is really really hard to describe but as I'm drinking it, and it rolls down off the tongue, down the throat, and as it rests on the tongue afterwards, and even in the finish, and, uh, and as it comes back up on you, there are a lot of complex flavors, and it's so difficult to describe. Um, but there's, there's different types of sourness, different sour flavors. There's a little bit of woodiness coming through. maybe some citrusy notes from from the hops but they're being masked so well by those other sour notes from the um, different types of sour notes from I suspect from the yeasts uh, it's really good the fact that I'm having so much trouble describing it means that this is is very much a singular experience and it is definitely something you should check out for yourself. I got it. I got to rate this one with a five out of five. Um, I mean, it's a ten point four percent alcohol by volume, and you wouldn't even know it. It's going down so easy, and just the fact that it's so unique and different from anything I've had before, it's really blowing me away. Um, a lot of care and love went into making this beer apparently and I'm getting more woody notes now now as I'm this far down in the glass I'm starting to taste a little bit of oak in there I mean that's just phenomenal that as I'm getting further down into the glass different different taste notes are coming through and different flavors that weren't there before. I mean, I'm sure they were there. I just didn't pick up on them right away. Um, it's evolving as I drink it, and that is amazing. So again, for me, a, a solid five out of five for a very unique 
uh, beer experience that is indescribable. Um, I'm at a loss for words here. Definitely check it out for yourself. Hit me up down in the comments, the email link down below. Ooh, pardon. Let me know what you think about this beer. Um, I'm sure you're going to pick up on some flavors that I didn't because I have a feeling this is one of those beers that is going to be different for everybody's palate. Um, while you're down there, make sure to hit me up with a like on the video and a share. And hit that subscribe button so you get a notification every time I post a new video. Hopefully you're finding some good advice in them. Or at least um, some entertainment value. But yeah, definitely check this beer out. Until next time, folks, thanks for tuning in. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for the beer, man. So, highly recommended by Extreme Beer Fest this weekend. We'll be able to get a hold of, I believe it's the American Crew.